Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Senator Conroy. Thank you, Cahirlach, and thank you very much, uh, Mr. Kassan, and thank you for all the excellent work that you have been doing, because I think without you, uh, things wouldn't be where, where they are. Um, you certainly have done the state some service, and the people who you describe and the situations you describe where people um, have been robbed of their money and robbed of their lives in, in some cases. It's a stark picture, but it is the picture that's there. It is the reality. It's the reality we as public representatives come, come across every day. And I agree with you in terms of the banks, and you'll have seen the banks here before us, and you will have met with them, why they would say that you know, they are sorry, they regret that this has happened. Um, that is not reflected uh, in, their, in their actions. Um, so just a couple of questions leading on from Deputy um, Doherty's uh, questioning. Do you think that, um, that this is likely to end up in um, um, a criminal court? I mean, it's, it's like any court case. I mean, one thing I say to all of the customers, the court is public as well. Um, you're bringing your innermost issues with regard to a family home to the issue. I don't believe it's for me to state whether it should or it shouldn't. Um, I remain foremost in my purpose from the outset, which was the customers, and they, their cry for help to, can we get assistance to get this back? Um, the issue of the broader aspects of it, I think the, the summary or the report of the investigation from the central bank will probably dictate whether that should or shouldn't happen. Yes. People may well try to escalate it. I think it would slow the matter, to be frankly, at the moment. Um, progress has been made. I think that has to be acknowledged. That progress is being made, but at such a, at such a slow pace um, that I, if you're overcharged at 500 or 600 a month, and it's going on now six years, to pay 600 of an overpayment, you have to earn 1,200. And this sector of society is the sector that pays the taxes, meets the payments, paid the stamp duty. They contribute a huge amount to society. And this is, the, this is one of the concerns that the Oireachtas have had in bringing in taxation or other means of, of creating income for the state. And in the meantime, our banking sector that we have supported have been doing this. I mean, it's a perfect storm for the economy as well in terms of the businesses that are failing because of the overchargings, the lack of availability of credit, and the people who went into arrears, which is back to Deputy McGrath's day, the issue about, they're now bank locked, essentially. And this is the difficulty. So this 3.25 and 3.67 margin issue, all these customers are bank locked because they can't move anywhere. Mm -hmm. And I don't know when it, I mean, it would be a very easy resolve. And I, I made the, availability of myself to each of the banks. Only one haven't met me. Uh, it was uh, KBC. They told me if they needed to meet me after the investigation, they would. But all of the other banks have met me. One of the main banks denied in November 15 that anybody was going back to Tracker. And four months later, the provision over 140 million or something. So why did it change in three months? I mean, they knew exactly where they were going. There's 400, 500 people working on the project for two years at that point. So I've, I've concerns. I understand the question. I don't think it's my game. Mm. I, I don't think it's, it's, it's my fight. I've, mm. I've taken on the issue on behalf of the customers. Really, the purpose of what I want to do next is unite the customers to one informed voice and let's challenge the remaining issues through the courts and okay. see what happens. I, see what's I suppose what's difficult for us to understand is in terms of your, your absolute confidence in the central bank in terms of sorting, sorting this out. Uh, and where people are at, and then we had the Ulster Bank in, 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 in front of us, and they commit to having most of it sorted out by Christmas and, and anything else early New Year, and all the Ulster Bank customers that I know uh, are still waiting. They're still getting the letters that they've been getting for the last number of years saying that it's been dealt with, and they don't see any action in <coughs> relation to whether they are inside or outside the redress scheme. And it really does concern me that, that you think that the lines of defence rather than res resolution um, are, are being sought out and that that's what, what's, what's causing the delay there. So I suppose the consumer protection role for those people, the consumer protection role of the central bank, is just not obvious to, to me. Yeah, but I suppose for that to be implied, you have to identify, in other words, the central bank with respect 
can only deal in the facts of the case. And that's probably what's posing the major issue, is trying to derive and get the facts from, I mean, for example, at the moment, um, people are requesting data requests, access requests for each account. <coughs> and we have a number of cases now where some of the documentation has been withdrawn, which makes reference to tracker issues, which is an astonishing development. We've seen it from a number of cases just only in the last couple of days. Their replies are telling me where they're positioning themselves. Some are caught in some areas, but they know they have wiggle room in other areas. They have one purpose. Let's get out of this for as cheap as possible. And if that means provisioning X, if we can save some of that X, they're right as straight back into their profit figures. And I don't know how any bank could have provisioned any number when they don't know the causes and effects of what has happened. Mm. Um, you can't multiply a certain figure across every family or every individual or every young person. I mean, some of the more traumatic things, and I, I, I'm bringing them as, as examples, and I challenge any of the banks to question anything I'm saying. Bring it on. I'd say, well, you'd show me where I'm wrong. Show me where I'm wrong. And then I'll say, I'll stop saying it. But if a bank thinks the two and two is going to become five or is going to become three, no. There's one word that describes the whole tracker debacle. And I've said this for quite a number of times. The one word that captures it all is control. The customers had control of the cost of their loans when the margin applied above ECB. And the banks did everything in their power to get that control back. That's what it's about. They had lost the control by creating the product. I mean, astonishingly about the product, there is one bank, no longer a, a bank that used to be in operation, that I have no complaints from. One bank, Irish Nationwide Building Society. And that astonishes a lot of people. The reason? They never did the product. They knew exactly the consequences of taking up the product, and they chose not to do it. So would you say the provision that's made by the banks at the moment, and you'll be familiar with the figures, even in terms of Ulster Bank, 118 million, do you think that is in any way um, sufficient to meet what's going to be needed? That's a right smile. Yeah. One of the reasons I, I smile back at that. So they're able to tell us that they have provisioned 118 mm. million, but they can't tell us how many customers are affected. Yeah. That doesn't add up. Mm. How can they, so which is the guess? Is the guess the provisioning figure? Mm. Or the numbers are going to come and tell us? Mm. Or are they going to ask me to challenge the other 500 that might be or might not be? Yeah. But the figures of provisioning came out. Now that's for accounting reasons and other aspects to the broader element of if they're sold, etc., across the Irish banks and so forth. So how can they provision a figure and they can't come into this room and tell us how many are affected accurately? Mm. The figure is accurate on the provisioning figure. They don't know how many children are in each of those family homes. They don't know how many properties. And it just goes on and on and on. And I mean, one of the difficulties I had uh, envisaged coming in today is I'm talking about all of the banks. I have files here, just reflective points across all of the banks. They arrive with their experts there and they've been scripted. Uh, some of the letters that I've seen written out to the affected customers when the redress letters eventually start to arrive, You'd read them and you'd actually start to think, if you read it, that it was actually the customer's own making. Mm. But we're very sorry for not having informed you correctly. I mean, there is a tone being used to it. I mean, it's all so scripted perfectly. Look, we know you're caught. Just get on with it. Man up. Mm. You've done the crime. Just face up. Mm. Doesn't that tone come from the, the, <clears throat> from the highest order where it said we all partied? You know, and I can really, um, I suppose, listen to what you're saying in terms of people's shame and feeding into that and exploiting that in the way that it has been done in such a ruthless way. Has this happened in any other country, the tracker mortgage tobacco? It did. It, um, um, in the UK, the, 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 the amateur investors, for want of a collective way of putting them, challenged the West Bromwich Building Society. There's a Bank of Ireland issue pending there as well um, because of the tracker product. But... What's astonishing about Tracker, I mean, would they prefer that the headline that it appears in the Irish Independent, Pori Kassan introduces Tracker mortgages to the marketplace? Because if they keep challenging me, I'll do it. Mm. Tracker mortgages are freely available in the UK, at, currently at 1.78 above UK base rates. 20-year fixed, 2.1 in Credit Agricole in France, 2.05 full fixed for the 15 years. 
how quick would they bring a tracker product back then? Because they won't do one mortgage. So there's now, I've called it a cartel before, it suits the banks perfectly that other entrants aren't coming into the market. And I hear this, the, the resistance to being able to repossess homes. And I'm not for one minute stating that there aren't people out here that have deliberately used the situation to stop paying their loans. I can tell you for certain today, I don't think I have one, because I'll see through them. I mean, I only engage people where I know there's a case. I had a, a win percentage level in the Ombudsman's office of 76% when the average upholds were between 10 and 12. And it's not because Pori Kassam was any walking genius. I knew how to present a case. And the question I had there was, how did I lose 24? Because I didn't bring a case unless I had a case. And it isn't the 76 that I was highlighting, it was the 24 that was lost. The concern I had there, and I know the current incumbent, Ger, Ger, um, sorry, um, Ger Deering, there's a complete change in how they in investigate cases and how they check cases, and that should help in bringing the cases to them from if they're not redressed correctly. To set a 10% of overcharged interest as a base level of compensation and then design it as a ceiling of compensation I think is also wrong. What timeline do you envisage um, for having all of this sorted? And that's I mean, it needs to happen in 17. I mean, people just yeah. cannot hang on any longer. I mean, you're looking now at, that's eight years. Mm. A 10 year old is now 18. Mm. An eight year old is now 16. I mean, there are years passing by. A 40 year old is now 48. 30 year olds have told me the 30s just passed. The, the scars that will remain with people need to be understood. And the reason I'm saying it here today is I don't think the banks get this. I think they know it because they're not fools. They know it's gone on. They know what is the effects of it, but they're not prepared to properly address it. And I said before of the Irish banks, maybe you didn't ask for enough money when you asked for a bailout, but don't go blaming the, your customers for that. If you needed to get 28 instead of 26, fine. Ask for it, but don't go the other tricks and try and go at the what are protected. I thought. I mean, there's there's an old movie. It's a Wonderful Life. I referenced it in a number of reports. I mean, it's time for the Mr. Potts to cop on and either get in and do it right or get out. Surely it's the central. And I finish on this, Carlick. Surely it's the central bank that's the institution that will make sure that there's none outstanding at the end of 2017. Absolutely. I, I think um, the speed, there's more care being given at the moment to getting it right than getting it done fast. Wouldn't it be great for us, for me to have to come back here and tell you, uh, Deputy McGrath, there's a thousand customers that got restored incorrectly? That's not likely to happen then, because of the rush to get it done. Wouldn't it be shocking to have to say that? And the customers know they're right. I mean, it's, it's in trying to put it across, to attempt to even think about doing it is wrong. To then do it is wrong. But to then morally attempt to stand by and let it continue, I think is deplorable. And I'm challenging them all of the time. There are units that are only a certain amount of people are allowed to talk to me. Um, but I'm going to keep talking. And if I unify the customer base, then they're going to have a, co a concern. Because when you unify a number of customers into one unit, everything that has happened to each of the customers can all be corralled into the same reply. So suddenly, no customer gets anything that any other customer didn't get. And there's a collective treatment of being the same. And that's one of the difficulties they've had. I know the mortgage that has no margin stated in it that is replaced at 0.8. I know the mortgage that has no margin stated that's attempted 3.25. But if, we didn't, if I didn't collectively try to join that together, they'd have probably had a lot more success. But, and I, I will finish. Surely the central bank needs to be doing that job. And thank you, Cahir Lucan. Thank Senator. you, Mr. Kassan. Well, can I just... You talked about control earlier on, um, Mr. Kassan. 
it appears to me that the control is still firmly with the banks and that that hasn't been taken over by the central bank. And what will happen if come mid-2017, um, um, mid as the central bank have promised, in terms of the banks then being in, engaging with the customers? I mean, what do they mean by engagement? You know, is it another letter that says something slightly different? Or, uh, that, that's a problem, Dean. and it's getting back to the Cahirlux observations earlier on in terms of the process not being transparent. Well, I suppose in terms the, of the, uh, what comes from that is the infamous ad of, I don't know what a tracker mortgage is. Um, in a smart reply, I said the bus should have been full of bank executives and chair and board of directors because they were the real people who didn't know what a tracker mortgage was or the consequences of it. But I think the next definition that will be up for debate is what is a pillar bank? And my understanding of what a pillar bank is, I don't think it's the design, including the Minister for Finance, of what he believes a pillar bank should be. I think it can be done with, if I was to use a couple of words, start showing some empathy to what the people went through and an understanding of the causes and effects. Some of these bank officials at the very top of the organisations didn't have to make the choices for their children that I've heard in my office. And what's truly appalling is in a method that was set up, which was voluntary, by the way, they didn't have to do it, um, to resolve these issues in a speedy manner, to then do and respond with the replies I'm getting is like a continuation of the wrong. And these people who have gone to the trouble of opening their hearts and their souls to me, to then be told, no. Okay, well, look. <coughs> Sorry.
you talked about control earlier on, um, Mr. Kassan. It appears to me that the control is still firmly with the banks and that that hasn't been taken over by the central bank. And what will happen if come mid-2017, um, um, mid as the central bank have promised, in terms of the banks then being in, engaging with the customers? I mean, what do they mean by engagement? You know, is it another letter that says something slightly different? Or, uh, well, that's the problem, Dean. and it's getting back to the Cahirlux observations earlier on in terms of the process not being transparent. Well, I suppose in terms the, of the, uh, what comes from that is the infamous ad of, I don't know what a tracker mortgage is. Um, in a smart reply, I said the bus should have been full of bank executives and chair and board of directors because they were the real people who didn't know what a tracker mortgage was or the consequences of it. But I think the next definition that will be up for debate is what is a pillar bank? And my understanding of what a pillar bank is, I don't think it's the design, including the Minister for Finance, of what he believes a pillar bank should be. I think it could be done with, if I was to use a couple of words, start showing some empathy to what the people went through and an understanding of the causes and effects. Some of these bank officials at the very top of the organisations didn't have to make the choices for their children that I've heard in my office. And what's truly appalling is in a method that was set up, which was voluntary, by the way, they didn't have to do it, um, to resolve these issues in a speedy manner, to then do and respond with the replies I'm getting is like a continuation of the wrong. And these people who have gone to the trouble of opening their hearts and their souls to me to then be told 